Good evening tonight's headlines, false rumors of cash handouts lead to hundreds gathering at Freedom House. A 21-year-old man is remanded to prison for a robbery charge. A joint operation rescues 44 female foreign nationals at Red Dragon Night Club. The Guyana Police Force Division No. 3 conducts a successful enforcement operation. Hugo Sonny Blake is arrested and charged for larceny from the person. Additionally, a suspect is apprehended for suspected possession of narcotics and unlawful possession of a motorcycle. Melroy LaRose is wanted in connection to the stabbing of his wife. Investigations continue as a suspect is released on bail in the Hakeen John case. Lastly family of nine to get new home from Mr. Muhammad. Do stay tuned for updates on these stories. Hundreds gather at Freedom House following false rumors of cash handout. Today, a significant number of individuals converged at Freedom House premises in response to unfounded rumors circulating about a cash handout event. Minister within the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for public affairs, Kwame McCoy, has denounced these rumors as baseless falsehoods and has attributed their propagation to the opposition. Despite efforts to quell the misinformation, a considerable crowd gathered at Freedom House, spurred by the false promise of monetary assistance. Minister McCoy emphasized that the dissemination of such deceitful information not only incites unnecessary panic, but also diverts attention from genuine government initiatives aimed at uplifting communities. In response to the situation, Minister McCoy reiterated the government's commitment to transparent communication and urged citizens to exercise caution and verify information before reacting. He also urged individuals to remain vigilant against the spread of false narratives that aim to sow discord and disrupt social harmony. <laughs> 21-year-old man remanded to prison for robbery charge. Stephen Anthony Williams, a 21-year-old resident of Lot 16 Rahamans Park, Houston, Georgetown, was remanded to prison on Monday following his appearance at the Georgetown Magistrates Court to answer to a robbery charge. Williams made his first court appearance before Magistrate Rondell Weaver, where the robbery charge was read to him. The charge alleges that on March 1, 2024, at Ruinvelt, Public Road, Georgetown, while being in the company of another and armed with a dangerous weapon, namely a cutlass, Williams robbed Ronaldo Persaud of various items totaling $465,000 in value, including electronic devices, jewelry, a haversack, and cash. The prosecution objected to bail being granted due to the nature and gravity of the offense, highlighting that Williams was positively identified by Persaud at the police station. Additionally, the accused reportedly admitted to the offense during his oral statement to the police. Furthermore, investigative ranks confirmed the existence of closed-circuit television CCTV, footage showing Williams committing the act, with indications of three other individuals reportedly involved in the robbery. In his defense, Williams informed the court that he takes care of and provides for his single mother, while requesting bail in a reasonable sum. However, Magistrate Weaver denied bail, stating the seriousness of the offense. Williams is scheduled to return to court on April 8, 2024, for statements. <laughs> Joint Operation Rescues 44 Female Foreign Nationals at Red Dragon Night Club the Ministry of Home Affairs wishes to inform the public of a successful joint operation conducted by the Guyana Police Force CID, Trafficking in Persons Unit, in collaboration with the Ministry of Human Services and Social Security CTIP Unit and the Ministry of Home Affairs. On Monday, March 4, 2024, at approximately 2.30 a.m., a cordon and search operation was executed at Red Dragon Night Club, located on Robb Street, Georgetown, based on received intelligence. During this operation, 44, 44, female foreign nationals were discovered and immediately taken into protective care. They are currently receiving various care services provided by the Ministry of Human Services and Social Security. Furthermore, the Guyana Police Force has launched an investigation into alleged acts of trafficking in persons and other forms of exploitation and abuse. Additionally, law enforcement officials found a .32 Taurus pistol and eight rounds of ammunition on the premises. The ministry will provide further updates on the investigation as they become available. 
We wish to reassure the public that the Ministry of Home Affairs, the Guyana Police Force, Ministry of Human Services and Social Security, and other anti-trafficking in person stakeholders remain vigilant and committed to safeguarding vulnerable individuals from exploitation and abuse. Successful Enforcement Operation by Guyana Police Force Division No. 3 Woman Superintendent Shellen Daniels, leading a dedicated team of alert police ranks from Division No. 3, executed a rigorous enforcement exercise during the Slingers weekend celebrations slash shows held at the Leonora Stadium over the past weekend, Friday and Saturday. The primary objective of the operation was to prevent individuals from entering the stadium grounds with prohibited items. Through meticulous monitoring and swift action, the police team successfully intercepted several individuals attempting to bring unauthorized items into the venue. One notable apprehension resulted in the discovery of an individual in possession of an unlicensed firearm and ammunition as he attempted to enter the Leonora Stadium. The individual has been promptly charged in accordance with the law. Furthermore, various other prohibited items were seized at the entrance gate, underscoring the effectiveness of the police operation in maintaining public safety and security during the event. The Guyana Police Force Division No. 3 remains committed to upholding law and order and ensuring the safety of all citizens and event attendees. We commend Superintendent Shellen Daniels and her team for their vigilant efforts in safeguarding the community. Arrest in charge of Hugo, Sonny, Blake for larceny from the person. The Guyana Police Force announces the arrest and subsequent charging of Hugo Blake, also known as a Sonny, a 21-year-old laborer from Barnwell North Mocha, East Bank Demerara. Blake was apprehended last week and formally charged on Tuesday for the offense of larceny from the person, as stipulated in Section 182 of the Criminal Law of Offenses, Act, Chapter 801. Blake made his appearance at the Diamond slash Golden Grove Magistrate Court before Principal Magistrate Judy Latchman, where the charge was read to him. He pleaded not guilty to the charge. Bail was granted in the sum of $70,000, and the matter was adjourned to March 28, 2023, for statements. The charge against Blake stems from an incident reported by Lennon Messiah, a 60-year-old pensioner, regarding an alleged larceny from the person. The incident occurred on February 28, 2024, at approximately 1400 hours HRS on Farm Access Road, East Bank Demerara. The Guyana Police Force remains committed to upholding law and order, ensuring the safety and security of all citizens, and bringing perpetrators of crime to justice. Apprehension of suspect for suspected possession of narcotics and unlawful possession of motorcycle. Detective Inspector De Silva, along with other ranks from Police Division No. 10, successfully apprehended a suspect for suspected possession of narcotics and unlawful possession of a motorcycle in an operation conducted on March 3, 2024. At approximately 11.30 HRS on March 3, 2024, Detective Inspector De Silva and his team were crossing the Burbis River on a pontoon at Takama Junction when they observed a man on a motorcycle approaching the pontoon. Upon noticing the police vehicles on the pontoon, the suspect attempted to flee by turning his motorcycle around. However, the ranks swiftly pursued and apprehended the suspect, identified as Chad Wayne Eastman, a 34-year-old laborer of Ebony, Burbis River. Upon searching Eastman and the haversack he was carrying, police discovered a large bulky parcel wrapped in transparent plastic suspected to contain cannabis. The parcel, weighing approximately 4 pounds grams, was found to contain leaves, seeds, and stems suspected to be cannabis. Eastman was promptly informed of the offense committed, cautioned, arrested, and taken into police custody. Subsequently, he was escorted to McKenzie Police Station along with the motorcycle, a black and white XR motorcycle with registration hashtag HC8990. During questioning, Eastman claimed that the motorcycle was acquired in December 2023 from an individual in Georgetown in exchange for 12, 12, LBS of marijuana. The suspected cannabis was weighed, photographed, marked, sealed, and lodged as evidence at McKenzie Police Station. Eastman remains in police custody pending charges related to suspected possession of narcotics and unlawful possession of a motorcycle. 
the Guyana Police Force reiterates its commitment to combating illicit activities and ensuring the safety and security of all citizens. Melroy LaRose wanted in connection to stabbing of his wife. The Guyana Police Force is urgently seeking the assistance of the public in locating Melroy LaRose, who is wanted for questioning in connection with the tragic stabbing death of his 24-year-old wife, Nike Shah Sutton. The incident occurred at their residence in Porica Back Dam, East Bank Essequibo, EBE. Melroy LaRose's last known addresses were provided as Parika Back Dam, EBE, and Kamwada, Northwest District, NWD, Region 1. Following the fatal altercation, LaRose fled the scene, prompting law enforcement to issue a wanted bulletin for his apprehension. According to police reports, the incident unfolded on Monday, when LaRose returned home intoxicated, sparking a heated argument with his wife. Despite temporarily leaving, he later returned with alcohol, reigniting the confrontation. As tensions escalated, LaRose allegedly stabbed Sutton during a scuffle, resulting in her tragic demise. In the aftermath of this devastating incident, the Guyana police force is appealing to anyone with information regarding Melroy LaRose's whereabouts to come forward. Citizens are urged to contact the police at telephone numbers 232-0313-225-8198 or visit the nearest police station to provide any relevant information. The cooperation of the community is crucial in ensuring that Melroy LaRose is swiftly apprehended and brought to justice. Together, let us stand against domestic violence and work towards achieving justice for Nike Shah Sutton and her grieving loved ones. Investigation continues as suspect released on bail in Hakeem John case. As investigators await the results of DNA tests from charred remains believed to be those of Hakeem John, who tragically lost his life in an incident involving electrocution during a fruits raid with his friends, developments in the case continue to unfold. Crime Chief Wendell Blanham confirmed that the suspect farmer has been released on $1 million station bail. This decision, Blanham explained, aligns with a recommendation from the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, and comes with the condition that the suspect reports to investigators periodically. The move to release the suspect on bail has sparked concern and frustration, particularly among the family members of the deceased. Sharon, John's mother, expressed disappointment upon learning of the suspect's release, stating her expectation that charges would have been laid. With the suspect now free pending further developments in the case, Sharon voiced her apprehension that he may attempt to evade justice. She emphasized her desire for accountability and justice for her son's death. The investigation into John's death stems from the discovery of charred remains, suspected to be his, on February 26. These remains were found in a fire heap in an empty lot near the farm owned by the suspect. Among the findings were human bones, burnt clothing, and other items. The circumstances leading to John's death unfolded after a 16-year-old friend of his went to the Law Grange police station, recounting details of the incident. He described accompanying John and another friend to pick fruits from a farm, where they were confronted by the owner. In the ensuing chase, John was electrocuted while attempting to scale the fence. John's mother recalled seeing him last on December 5, 2023, contrary to the initial report from the teenager indicating that the raid occurred in November of the same year. As the investigation progresses and the community seeks answers, authorities remain committed to pursuing justice in this tragic case. Family of Nine to Get New Home from Mr. Mohammed a family of nine, including seven children of Mon Repos Pasture, East Coast Demerara, ECD, who took to social media a few days ago pleading for assistance, will soon move into a new home following the intervention of Mr. A. Mohammed. Presently, the family lives at a relative's house, but they would have been given notice to move out. The father sustained burns to his body while living in Venezuela and is unable to work. He performs odd jobs to maintain his family. However, the mother, Parvati Sipersat is a housewife who mostly takes care of the children. Nevertheless, in a social media post, the mother as well as the children called upon T. Mohammeds for assistance in providing food, clothing, and shelter. The post was brought to the attention of the businessman, who immediately traveled to the area to get a first-hand look at their living conditions. 
Mr. Mohammed was left speechless at the situation and made a commitment to construct a home for them. Presently, a team is being mobilized to start construction with an estimated time of one week for completion.